we go. All right, everyone. Today we are going to brew a Hefeweizen. This is my son's favorite. My wife likes it. So this is an easy one to get her convinced to let me do it here at the house. So um, this time we ordered from Northern Brewer. Okay, they're one of the bigger uh, brewing supply companies on the internet. Uh, we've got more beer, which we've bought some equipment from in the past, or Adam did. This kit is the Hefeweizen. It comes with six pounds of a liquid malt extract. This is 65% wheat, 35% barley. And then it has a one pound packet of the dried malt extract, a Bavarian wheat. Which you we have, are familiar with. Yes. Using this style. Right. You've got some premium hops here. This is the German Tetanang hop pellets. It's one ounce. And then we went with the Seyfail W68 for the active dry yeast. So when I purchased this, I had a 10% um, a coupon and the total came out to, with shipping and tax, $55.59. So it's not a huge investment and this is going to create five gallons of Hefeweizen. Not bad for $55. All right, so we set up shop this time in my kitchen. In the past, we've used Adam's deck, and that's been great. Lots of natural light and everything. Hopefully the lighting is fine in here, but this is gonna make it a lot easier to slide the kettle off of the heat when we need to. For this brew, we have to follow the instructions that they sent us. They're very straightforward, but we're only starting with two and a half gallons of water. Um, we're going to do two and a half gallons of water that I'm starting to bring up to a boil, and then we're going to add half of the liquid wheat malt extract syrup. Stir that all in, and then we'll move forward. Okay, so we brought it up to a boil. It's time to put in half of the liquid wheat malt extract. This is thick like honey, so we're not going to film the whole thing, but just to kind of give you an idea. And what we want to do is pour it more on the spoon and let it do its thing so that we're not scorching anything. And there's gonna be a lot of stirring involved, so we're not gonna really do a whole lot more on camera. All right, so this wart is really starting to take shape. As you can see, we did about half of the uh, six pounds of liquid malt extracts. We're just stirring, 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 and this is going to be boring for you guys to watch. Um, but we're just trying to make sure it doesn't clump. We don't want any scorching or anything like that. But the smell, fantastic. Weedy. Looking forward to it. All right, so we have our premium hops here. This is the German Tetnang hop pellets. I'm going to open this up. Um, last time when we did our Belgian, we just poured them in loose. This time we're going to use the mesh bag like we had done with the stout. Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty citrusy. Here, get a, get a whiff of that. I like it. So we're going to pour this right into here. Okay. And then we will tie it off and we'll tie it off onto one of the handles there again, like we've done in the past. I'm just gonna let that boil for about an hour with the hops in it. All right, so we've been sanitizing the wart chiller. We're gonna take it out just for a little bit. We don't normally do this. Um, we're gonna take it out and just set it aside because I still need to add the other three pounds of the liquid wheat malt extract. So the other half of this bottle. And I have one pound of the Brees dry malt extract. It's the Bavarian wheat. So we just need to get both of these in there and then I'll put the, the wart chiller back in and let it sanitize a little bit more. Okay, so all of the liquid malt extract is now in the boil. Um, this came in a plastic, almost like a milk jug kind of container with a wide mouth. I know more beer and our local homebrew place, they do the liquid extracts in bags, which might be easier. That was a little bit messy, but it's also the first time I've used theirs. So we're not super familiar with the, the liquid. So maybe I did something incorrectly, but we are familiar with this. This is the dry malt extract. And we're gonna get this in here. And again, we're gonna stir. 
One thing we're very excited about is there's no scorching. Oops, gotta get it off that bag. We haven't had any, any scorching, so that's a good thing. There we go, coming off that hot bag. Just slow and steady, get it all in there. And then we're gonna put the wart chiller back in. Let that sanitize a little bit more and then we're gonna move outside to my driveway uh, where my hose bib is and we'll activate the wart chiller. Get it going and cool this down to 70 degrees or less so that we can put the yeast in and finish up this process. Okay, so the wart chiller is in now. We're trying to get it down to about 70 degrees, maybe a little bit less. Uh, we had a little malfunction on my kitchen stove. This hose touched, you can see where it melted. It touched part of the heating element. And that's why we've got runoff with a very short line here, but it still works. So it is what it is. This is only two and a half gallons. So normally we go about 20, 30 minutes with the wart chiller, I think. This might do it faster. Who knows? We'll see. Okay, so the wart chiller did its thing. We're down to 70, a little bit below 70 degrees, and we're ready to put it into the fermenter. Now, the instructions from Northern Brewer here suggest that you add two gallons of cold water, so that's what we have in there, and then we're gonna transfer the wart over, and as you've seen before, we generally use that strainer just to make it a little bit cleaner. So, let's release the hounds. And this is reverse osmosis water. Yes. Yeah, yeah, when we did the Belgian, we used some spring water. And prior to that, it was just tap water, I believe. That's right. One thing that we noticed from our beer, or this beer here, from different from what we've done on our other two, is how much lighter this is compared to the stout and the Belgian. Oh, I mean, it's a half, so yeah. It should be. Um, I was curious to see with that liquid malt extract how dark it would be because I had mentioned earlier it was like honey. It was more like a caramel. It had the color, the consistency of a, a melted caramel. All right, so as you look in there, no scorching to speak of. The bottom, the sides, everything looks good. Um, we did follow all of the instructions here. Uh, no clarifier in this one, which we've always used in the past, but I mean, that's a half. And, um, we need to bring this up to a total of five gallons. So once this is done, it does say to leave any sediment in the bottom of the kettle, just let it sit there. There really isn't a whole lot. And with this strainer, we're gonna kind of make sure that we do. I just wanna get as much of this Hefeweizen goodness as I can. So I'm really looking forward to this. Yeah, look at that, no scorching at all. We did a good job. We done good. So five gallons, and now we're just gonna aerate a bit. Just gonna Shake it up. Do, do, shake it up. I'm just gonna try to swirl it around a bit. It looks kind of like a, a traditional apple cider. That's the color right now, but there's a lot of sediment in here that if you look, you can see it's already starting to settle. And I'm fairly certain that that sediment's gonna sit right below there and we're gonna get some really, really delicious Hefeweizen goodness. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff there. Yep. All right, checking out the original gravity here and just looking, it looks like it's gonna be about a 1.045, 0.46, somewhere in that range. I think 0.045. Check out the difference in color from the oh, big one to the Absolutely. Next. Okay, so we took the yeast and the scissors out of the sanitizer. So everything is sanitized. Anytime you're touching the cooler liquid, everything that touches it needs to be sanitized. So we're just gonna pitch the yeast. That's all we're gonna do. We'll put this cap back on it, and then we'll aerate it again. We re-sanitize the cap as well. Right. There you go. Shake it up. Shake it up. Do that, do that back and forth again. That was good. Yeah, that's good stuff. 
Okay, so the fermenter is now in a tote. I've heard horror stories about a half fermenting, how it can flow over. Hopefully this doesn't. We have the airlock with a little bit of water in there, wrapped it in a towel so it's not getting any sun. And I'm just gonna store it right here under my desk in the office. And I'll come back and check it later tonight, see if there's any bubbling happening. All right, so until this brew, we've just been using Adam's recipes. He bought this from More Beer. He got the whole kit and caboodle. Um, this is the box that the Hefeweizen kit came in, and it's got all the information on there. Uh, like I said, it was about 60 bucks with shipping and tax and everything. This is a new style for us. We've gone with an amber, we've done a stout, and we've done the Belgian. So this is going to be lighter than any of those. And we're anxious to see how it turns out. Hopefully we did well, but we don't know what we don't know. Looking forward to doing some more. Looking forward to what happens here. Two weeks, bottle it up. Bottling it up. Thanks Cheers. for watching.